Hi and welcome to all of you. So in this lecture, which is in the series of molecular biology, uh, I will be discussing the machinery of replication. Uh, I will be discussing the replosome, the different types of polymerases in uh, prokaryotes, taking E. coli as an example, and discuss different types of polymerases, their characteristics, and focusing uh, mainly on the DNA polymerase 3. So discussing uh, with the machinery of a replication, as you already know that uh, all of the enzymes and the proteins which are needed for the replication process are together called as the replosome. This makes a dynamic complex in the cell and they are indirectly or directly involved in the process. The main enzyme which uh, uh, is uh, required for the replication process is the DNA polymerase enzyme which associates itself with the other proteins and enzymes which are accessory to it during the replication process. And the table gives you the description of different types of enzymes which are essential for the replication process and this makes the machinery of a, a replication viable. Uh, prime of them is the DNA polymerase as already known. Then there is DNA helicase which unwinds the DNA uh, during the replication fork uh, opening then DNA ligase which joins the newly formed DNA fragments in the lagging strand that is the it joins the Okazaki fragments together to form a continuous strand then there is a DNA primase this is uh, required for the synthesis of primers uh, during the initiation of the replication without this the uh, DNA polymerase in itself cannot synthesize the DNA on the template strand then there is topoisomerases which change the linking number and it relaxes the torsional strain in the uh, replication fork which is caused by the unwinding of the DNA during the replication process. Then the another is RNA is H. It removes the RNA primers which are synthesized by the DNA primase during the initiation of the replication. And finally, the single strand binding proteins, these keep the single strand in a linear form during the replication process. So all of these are the constituents of the replosome and primary of all of them is the polymerases. So the replication process takes place with the help of polymerases. Before we move further down to the replication process, we should know what polymerases are. In general, polymerases are the enzymes which are capable of synthesizing a long chain of polymers of nucleic acids. And we know that nucleic acids are of two different types. One is called as DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, and another is called as RNA, ribonucleic acid. So the difference of them makes the polymerase also of two different types. One is the DNA polymerase, it's also called as DNA dependent DNA polymerase, which assembles the DNA molecule, which is DNA. So the polymerase is dependent on reading DNA and to make a new copy of a DNA. Whereas RNA polymerases are assembling the RNA molecules. So they are DNA dependent RNA polymerases, or simply we can call them RNA polymerases as well. So if a polymerase is synthesizing a DNA molecule, then we will call them as DNA polymerases. If it synthesizes an RNA molecule, then RNA polymerases. And DNA polymerases are usually the central ones which are dedicated to the replication process. And they are the ones which catalyze the uh, nucleophilic attack of 3' prime hydroxyl end on the incoming DNTPs and constantly consequently add the DN, uh, DNTPs to the growing chain of the uh, daughter DNA on the template parental DNA molecule. Irrespective of the sources as well as the types of the polymerases, uh, all polymerases have certain basic properties. First and foremost is that they all catalyze the synthesis of a new DNA in 5 prime, 3 prime direction. That means the daughter DNA is being extended at the 3 prime uh, hydroxyl group which acts as a nucleophile as well. And this is the end which is extended and elongated during the replication. 
thus all polymerases have 5 prime 3 prime polymerase activity second is that they all are template dependent they need to have a parental dna to guide them what to synthesize so they need to be told when where and what nucleotide has to be incorporated where has to be incorporation of a t against a and there should be an incorporation of a g against c and vice versa and this uh, is being told by the template third is the requirement of the primer the primer provides the three prime hydroxyl group at the initiation process of the replication when the daughter dna is not present so this primer is synthesized by dna primase uh, separately and on that primer which is a rna uh, short run uh, the dna is being added by the polymerases later on this primer is then removed by the rna's h during the replication elongation process and the fourth one is that they all major polymerases usually have a, another activity which is uh, in opposite to the 5 prime 3 prime polymerase activity i have already told you in a previous lecture also this 3 prime 5 prime exonuclease activity is reversed to that of a polymerase activity and it is required to check the correct nucleotide is inserted or not if the correct correct nucleotide is not inserted during the elongation process of the replication then with the help of this activity the wrong base is removed back the removal is called as the proofreading process so taking example of e coli polymerases uh, here we will be discussing the polymerases in light of e coli cell in e coli there are a number of different genes which code usually for the five different types of polymerases uh, out of which three are important dna polymerase one two and three dna polymerase three in e coli uh, uh, is the principal polymerase which unlike others is a multimeric complex of 18 subunits uh, of 10 different types the 10 uh, subunits are named here as listed in the slide you can see alpha epsilon theta tau beta chi and so on and so forth out of these 18 subunits the 14 subunit makes a, a dna polymerase third star the dna polymerase third star consists of two core polymerases which are of alpha epsilon theta and tau as you can see in the uh, video on the right hand side uh, you will see that the alpha epsilon theta and tau make a core polymerase on either side of this multimolecular assembly the alpha epsilon and theta are the actual uh, core of the polymerase while as the tau exists as a dimerization subunit And here in this core, alpha has a polymerase activity. So the activity, actual active site of the E. coli polymerase third is the alpha, which has the polymerase activity, and epsilon has the proofreading activity. While as gamma, delta, delta, dash, chi, and psi makes uh, the alpha makes as the cl clamp loading complex of six subunits, as you can see in the uh, slide. The E. coli DNA polymerase third star is then completed by the addition of a dimer uh, of beta subunits uh, on each of the core polymerases. This uh, assembly uh, not only completes the polymerase uh, in its uh, totality, but also increases the processivity of the polymerase. As you know from the previous lecture, I told you about the processivity of the polymerase. Without the uh, beta subunit attaching to the DNA polymerase third star, the processivity of this uh, polymerase is very low. It is increased only when beta subunits bind to each of the codes uh, and increases processivity to about uh, 500,000 times. As I have already told you that uh, there are five different types of polymerases in the E. coli. Uh, three are the main ones. Uh, uh, DNA polymerase three we just mentioned. What are the others? Are the DNA polymerase one, DNA polymerase two in comparison to the DNA polymerase three. The three types of polymerases as shown in this figure. As you will see in the table that uh, most difference uh, which happens uh, between the Pol three and the Pol uh, one and two is that in the structure, Pol3, as we discussed already, is a multimeric complex, while as Pol1 and Pol2 
two or only single polypeptides. Uh, further, also they differ in the, um, their functionality of polymerization rate and processivity in having a very low polymerization rate as well as having a low processivity. But all, all three of them, Pol1, Pol2, and Pol3, uh, have the 5 prime, 3 prime polymerase activity and the opposite 3 prime, 5 prime exonuclease activity. There is another difference between the three is that only Pol1, which is specialized kind of a, a polymerase, has a specialized activity that is 5 prime, 3 prime exonuclease activity. This activity is almost equivalent to that of a polymerase activity because they all they both move in the same direction of 5 prime 3 prime when is this activity used is um, will be discussed further down so as in the previous slide we mentioned that dna polymerase is unique the uniqueness of this uh, dna polymerase one is just possessing of an additional 5 prime 3 prime exonuclease activity and that is present in the n terminal domain of this polypeptide which functions as the DNA polymerase 1. The N-terminal domain can be excised or removed from the DNA polymerase polypeptide by mild protease treatment. When we remove this activity, the other two activities remain in the DNA polymerase 1. And uh, the exonuclease activity, uh, after removal of this exonuclease activity, that is 5 prime, 3 prime exonuclease activity, whatever remains is called as clinofragment. So DNA polymerase clinofragment is the DNA polymerase without the additional 5 prime, 3 prime exonuclease activity. And it has intact 5 prime, 3 prime polymerase and 3 prime, 5 prime exonuclease activity. Uh, how is this activity important for the DNA polymerase is in the process called as NIC translation. The NIC translation as you can see in the uh, accompany diagram is when uh, there is some mutation in the DNA and you need to remove it or there is a presence of a primer in the Okazaki fragments and you need to remove it. The DNA polymerase one comes uh, in and binds to the uh, DNA duplex and identifies the mutation or the RNA run, removes it with the help of this 5 prime, 3 prime exonuclease activity, which is similar to the 5 prime, 3 prime polymerase activity. So by this activity, the exonuclease activity, it removes the, uh, the mutation, the RNA run or the uh, DNA, which is uh, not uh, needed, then synthesizes a new DNA on it. This process of removal of an RNA primer in the Okazaki fragments or the DNA which is mutated uh, by the RNA DNA polymerase 1 with the help of an additional 5 prime 3 prime exonuclease activity is called as NIC translation. So NIC translation helps in mending the gaps between the uh, strands of the Okazakis in the daughter DNA when it is synthesized. So it is a special function of a DNA polymerase 1 and DNA polymerase 1 follows DNA polymerase 3 in removal of the primers, especially when uh, the case is about Okazaki fragments in a lagging strand synthesis. I hope you liked this lecture and it was beneficial to you. In the next lecture, I will be discussing the mechanism of replication. If you like the contents of the video, you can order the book Molecular Biology and Biotechniques from Amazon. It's available both in Kindle and paperback format. And do subscribe to my channel uh, for further uh, videos which I will upload in due time.